Joining John in this clip from an episode of Event Horizon is space nerd and novelist Andy Weir, author of The Martian and most recently Artemis. Andy, you uh, recently wrote a short story that you released online called Digitocracy, and there will be a link in the description below to that. Now, this short story's premise, without going into spoilers, is the dangers of AI, or maybe not the dangers, just the realities of an artificial intelligence interacting with humanity. Is this something that scares you? No, not at all. I, uh, it's interesting. Digitocracy is getting a lot more attention than I expected. I, I wasn't trying to make a <laughs> I wasn't trying to make a statement or anything. It's just uh, it's just a short story I wrote. Um, and uh, I actually think that AIs and computers and stuff are going to dramatically improve the world. I think that like if you if, if you take a look at something like AlphaGo, right? It's it or Alpha Alpha Zero, which plays chess. It, it's now to the point where the computers can play chess and go better than any human, right? Well, what what about what happens when we get an AI that can manage an economy better than any human? You know, then that'd be interesting because if you do what the AI says, it's like, well, we don't fully understand it, but it said to increase the uh, tariff on imported barley by 0.03 percent, and now we're having a housing boom. <laughs> you know, so it could be really interesting. So, do you think though, what that brings up in my mind though is that. If an AI can run an economy better than humans can, and say it can create laws better than humans can, it could also do things like do science better than humans can. You know, a, a computer could be a better scientist. Now, in the 30s, the economist Keynes had pointed out in a paper that eventually this means the entire human race goes unemployed. So do you think that one of the dangers of AI is the social upheaval that comes from technological unemployment. That that unemployment is the best thing ever, because I think that broadly speaking, like, you know, in tens of thousands of years, when people look back on the history of the human race, they'll be like, you know, the Paleolithic era and stuff like that. We are in the um, the uh, scarcity era and we're working toward post scarcity when we reach post scarcity that's when people don't have to work at all like uh everything you need is dealt with by automation so um it's like it's okay if everybody loses their job if you if nobody needs to do a job if it's like hey i'm sick well go go to the doctor it's like okay it's it's a computer but it it takes care of you and it's like hey, I'm, I'm hungry. Well, go get some of the food that our robots and computers are generating for you. You know, it's uh, once you reach that point of post-scarcity, that's that's good, not bad. <laughs> so when do we go unemployed? Uh, when does when do we reach a point where a an artificial intelligence can write a better novel than a human can? I am. I think about that a lot. And I I suspect that there will be fiction author computers that are comparable to humans like in in my lifetime it wouldn't surprise me at all when you when you come down to it stories are structures and uh, ba basically once an ai has the ability to evaluate the readability of a book like to evaluate how good is the story you know then an ai will be able to try out a, a whole bunch of variations evaluate them and say here here's a story now, I might start off with an AI that says, here are the plot beats of a story. Here are the events that happen. And then it's up to, you know, it'll be up to a human to actually, you know, write the prose that conveys the story. But then eventually the computers will get, you know, good at that, too. <laughs> I think I, I, I'm just hoping all that happens, you know, at, you know after I retire. <laughs> Me, too. And I'm definitely not looking forward to the day that that. A computer can make a YouTube video. Um, now, well, also think about what's next is that like with, you know, computer graphics being what it is and processor power going up, the computer would be able to write a movie and then create it. Yeah, completely from <laughs> scratch. Yeah, completely. Completely like, CGI. I'm like, or you could even make it custom. It might be it might be in the future that movies aren't these big releases that are made, you know, by by huge studios. It's like you tell your computer. Uh, I'm in a sad mood. Make me a romantic comedy, please. 
oh, and make one of the characters a professional juggler. And then it'll do it. <laughs> now, if you could do that, having both of uh, both of your your big books having been um, option for movies made into movies, would you make your own movie? Would you remake The Martian, or would you just leave the leave it as it is? Uh, well, I I loved. The, I think they did a fantastic job making The Martian. Or, or are you talking about in a future where the computer can just remake stuff for you? Or, we can remake, also... yeah, can remake stuff for you. For example, um, now I loved the March in the movie as well. It was fantastic. Um, but the book, there was more in the book. So would you as an author prefer to make your own version of the Martian with your, your AI movie maker um, as opposed to just leaving the cultural significance of the original one behind and just leaving it I... at that? I'd, I'd leave the original one alone because if I have my AI movie maker, I'd want to see new stuff. <laughs> I, I'd be like, hey, I want you to uh, – AI movie maker, here's, this, I, here's an idea for my next book. Uh, make me a movie out of it. <laughs> be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at JMG Event Horizon. And be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications of new shows which come out every Thursday night. Have a guest suggestion? Someone you really want to hear me have a conversation with? Leave your suggestions in the comments below.